Expedition Church of the Triad. Hallelujah. Let's stand up and praise the Lord together. Glory to his holy name. I lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one that I need. And you are always there. In troubled times, it's you I seek. Put you first, that's all I need. I humble all I am, all to you. Word 
became flesh for sin and death. Now you're risen. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as cross. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the cross. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Oh, lead me, lead me to the In your presence, you shelter my heart. In your presence, your light quells the dark. I live in your strength. And rest in your love. Keep my heart in your presence. I am bought by the blood of your precious son you set me apart in your presence for me I will ever and forever praise your holy name I'll keep my In your presence At the sound of your great name All the earth rejoices At the sound of your great name I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. I've been saved by your grace in your presence. I am healed, amazed. Through the life in your world, I will ever and forever praise your holy name. I'll keep my heart in your presence. At the sound of your great name, all the earth rejoices. At the sound of your great name, I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. In your presence, 
you shelter my heart in your presence your light quells the dark of love in your strength and rest in your love I'll keep my heart I'll keep my heart I'll keep my heart in your presence Blessings go to those who are kind to the weak. Psalm 41. The Lord rescues them from trouble. He protects and restores and gives them life.
from the beginning from the beginning from the beginning everlasting Praise Him from everlasting to everlasting. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, turn around and tell somebody you're glad that Jesus is alive. Now tell the somebody and say, I'm glad He's alive in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for being here this morning. Welcome all those watching via the Internet. Hallelujah. And so happy to have you. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Well, that's really cool. I can see that. <laughs> I couldn't see it Thursday. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had, uh, I had cataract replacement here on Friday. and uh, But I'm not preaching today because um, there's still swelling and my equilibrium's off. And it starts, if I start walking around a little bit, um, I start getting kind of disoriented. And uh, so... Um, I drove to church this morning for the first time since I had the surgery, and um, whew, thank God I've been delivered. My wife drives so slow <laughs> and cautious. Honey, you can pull out. There's a car, but they're four miles down the road. You can pull out. She was driving so slow back from the doctor that a truck was behind us as she was turning into a gas station, just blew the horn because went, she wasn't going fast enough in the right lane on Wendover. Now, I will say he was being ridiculous. I was ready to jump out and go, no, you don't blow the horn at my wife. I would, but you can't. Hallelujah. Amen. So I went, well, I can see. Um, uh, I went back in Friday afternoon. I had surgery in the morning. Went back in the afternoon. And before surgery, my, this, this eye was at 2,400. Uh, it was 2,040 and supposed to get better. Hallelujah. Now he, he said if, he, if it was 2,200 on Friday afternoon, he'd been happy. But um, because it just gets better, you know, as the swelling goes down and stuff. But 2,040, it was like, <laughs> that's pretty good. Hallelujah. So we're, I'm, I'm looking at 2020 is what I'm thinking. We're, we're going down to 2020 here. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is kind of nice that I can, I can see your face. I, I see faces with this eye that. Before, you were just kind of a, you know, a blob. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. So anyway, um, what's that? Oh, everybody smiling? Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, the honeymooners are um, uh, headed to the airport to come home. And uh, they've had a good week, <coughs> and we've missed them. I've had, we've, had, we've had Blue all week. The neighbors are not happy, but that's okay. He let them all know he was back. Uh, every morning and every afternoon, he just let them know he was home. Uh, he had missed them. The rabbits and the squirrels and the people walking and everybody else have found out that Blue is back in town until this afternoon that he goes back to his place. Glory to God. And Dixie came over for a visit for two days, and so they really had a good time letting all the neighbors know that they were both back. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so God's good. Now, uh, real quick announcement. We are uh, coming up two weeks from today. It's Fifth Sunday, uh, Down East Barbecue and Fried Chicken Meal. We, um, we, we just decided, we, we kind of Wednesday night talked to the church and kind of came to the conclusion that maybe trying to do a community harvest festival was too much. So we are going to do one, but it's going to be our church. We're going to do games and stuff for the church. But instead of trying to make it an outreach and, you know, get banners and flyers and try to do that in two weeks, or it's just. So here is what our plan is. Beginning in January, we're going to have, we're going to have, a, um, we're going to have planning meetings. We're going to plan the year for events like that. In the beginning of the year, so we can get the bu budget, get the stuff, have it out in two, three months in advance, 
have it all planned, the, the PR plan and all that to go into effect instead of trying to pull it off at the last second, you know? So uh, when we were younger, we pulled stuff I mean, off at the last second. Let's do a vacation Bible school Sunday, and we pull it off. Um, it don't work that way anymore. I, I, I was being a little facetious because we did, when we did vacation Bible school back in the day when we, we started in January painting the mural. They would paint on that thing for months. Um, you know, um, now with big screens and that kind of stuff, you don't necessarily have to do that. But we were painting these big 12-foot tall, 24-foot wide murals that took weeks and weeks of volunteer time coming in and painting to get it done. And it was always looked really cool. But it was a lot. It was a lot of work. But so vacation Bible school, we did plan that out way in advance. <clears throat> but you know, maybe pulling off a, ha a fall festival or whatever, we we just kind of did it. We could do it in no time. So, but we're going to change. Okay, we're going to change. We have a lot of great ideas, and we've had a lot of great ideas this year that we just we wanted we wanted to do. We couldn't pull it off. You know, so much going on. You know, moving into the building, weddings. Um, all the other stuff going on in the world. <coughs> so we are going to start in January with church team planning meetings and plan out the year for those kind of events. Now, guest speakers and that kind of stuff, that'll be different. But for this kind of thing, okay, uh, I don't want to be like, well, we've already planned our guest speakers out for the next three years. Yeah, but what if the Lord wants you to bring so-and-so in? You know, I mean, that's, that's a little hard to, to kind of do some of that stuff. All right, uh, but the, our annual stuff that we want to do and our regular stuff that we want to do, we can kind of be planning that out and really have it in advance and have it kind of in the bank where when it gets here, we're not stressed, we're not pushing it, we're not anybody like going crazy. It's it just roll it out and let's go. All right, so fifth Sunday will be a fifth Sunday down east barbecue fried chicken. Church far Harvest Festival, we're going to have campfire s'mores, and we're going to have games, and we're going to do stuff here. All right. I think Riley's ready to roll. Tim's ready. Oh, Tim's joining in. Pound it, Tim. There you go, buddy. All right. He's ready to join in with Riley. All right. Glory to God. And, of course, that means, you know, candy. Uh, if you just, like, I want to just let my kids dress up, great. Moses, Abraham, you know, uh, uh, Peter, Jesus, I mean, whoever, Mary, um, you know, Esther, that's all good. Do not show up the, like the walking dead or the wicked witch of the West. Anyway. <laughs> and my kids better not do something like that to me. Hallelujah. They would never do anything like that. Come walking in dressed up like a witch. Huh? Not a, unless it's a Holy Ghost Jedi, I know. Bible characters. Without the pointy ears. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There. So that's an explanation for that. We've kept, you know, we, we've said a few things this year. We're like, Listen, we're going to do this. And then we had to go, I can't do that. And we realized, I think we, what we realized was with all this activity going on uh, and where we are now and, and, and so forth, that we need better planning for pulling off some of this stuff. And um, back when Janie and I weren't working in the school system, we could work tw all week, 40 hours a week each and work on stuff and be working and pulling it off. And people who weren't, well, they would all come down to church. We could work, but that ain't true right now. So we d we can't, we don't have that time. So it's better planning. Everybody say better planning. So this year has been a big year. There's been a lot going on this year. I mean, there's a whole lot that's taking place this year here, getting the building, getting the building set up, all that kind of stuff. So next year, now we're going to begin to enjoy the fruits of our labor of having this and move into the the planning and reach outreach. All right. Y'all cool with that? All right. As long as our kids get to have the kind of festival, s'mores, campfires, play games, get candy kind of stuff, right? Yeah, Tim's tent candy. He, he, until I said get candy, he didn't raise his hands. I said candy, the hands went up. Yeah. Y'all don't deny them candy, do you? I said, I said, y'all don't deny them candy, do you? 
Yeah, because he, he looked like, yeah, I want some candy, man. Well, it came from the pastor. Can't deny me. All right. Well, it's, it's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand or reach on the seat backs in front of you. Uh, if they're running a little scarce, that's because Joe told me two weeks ago I needed something and I hadn't done it yet. Okay. So, I've been busy. Hallelujah. If you give me electronic ca uh, uh, apps or whatever, you go ahead and get that. Hallelujah. Faith Victory Church with the dollar sign in front for a cash app. Donations at fbc.org um, on PayPal. We haven't heard back from the IRS yet, have we? Other than they've gotten our stuff. And that's, that's the last we've heard. I mean, it could be six months with them. You just don't know. <coughs> yeah. They received our information on changing the name. They told us that. Okay. You know, we're waiting to hear the rest of it. Amen. All right. Of course, they had to because we're legally changed our name, so they had to fix it. Anyway, praise the Lord. All right. You ready to give? Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they tithe and give into the kingdom of God. We thank you. You open up heaven's windows. You empty it on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Brother Joe, for in-house. And, sweetie, are you coming? Are you going to give it to me? What do you want to do? Okay, she's coming. I'm slow, right? <laughs> okay, so um, I ordered these for everyone in the church to have with elections coming up. Um, of course, without elections coming up, we'd still want to pray for our country. But with elections coming up, um, I wanted everyone, or at least every family, I'm not sure if I brought enough. I should have brought more probably. But um, at least one in every family. It's a... USA prayer map and inside of this let me open it up how many of you agree our country needs prayer yeah yeah definitely so inside of here is um, a if I can get it open is a map of the US and at the bottom each state is listed with um, what a little bit of statistics about it. For example, its population, its governor's name, its percent evangelical, and its capital. And there's a prayer focus each day as well. And so I want to encourage you to begin to pray. We need for our elections to turn out in favor for our country to be able to do the things God would want our country to do all over the world. And so we want to pray for all of our states, their elections, be reminded to pray. And obviously, we won't be, have 31 days, so we need to double up to get to November the 8th. But um, we want to take it seriously, pray. Um, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman avails much, right? And so we want to have, I'll get this folded up again eventually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we, <laughs> thank you. We want, we want to be part of that group that's praying across America. We want to be a part of the change. And in prayer, all kinds of things can happen in prayer. You know, we can't look at our country and go, oh, it's, it's over, you know. It can't, it can't change. You know, it's just gone too far. No, nothing has gone too far for God. God is a great, mighty, powerful God, and change can take place. But we need to be lifting our prayers up. We need to be lifting prayers up for this country, for this state, for this city, for the areas around this city. You know, we need to be constantly thinking and praying and expecting and believing, okay? All right, so I, I encourage you to take part in this, to be aware and have some effectual fervent prayers going forth, okay? All right, God bless you. Do you want an extra one? 
Okay. You know, Brother Hagen had that had the prophecy back in the '60s about the burnout cities, and then um, had a vision of America and cities were on fire all over the nation, and uh, we I think we've already seen that, you know, a couple of years ago with the cities being burned and all that. But then out of that, uh, uh, a plant began to rise back up. And uh, I believe there's another visitation of God coming to America. We're not just going to just cast it aside and say we're going down the tubes. Uh, we are not going to just give it over to the devil. And we're not just going to give it over to the devil and say take over. You know, and that, oh, well, just, uh, you know, we'll just go and go to heaven and give, give the rest. Uh, uh, we're not going to do that, you know. And um, I believe awakening is coming. Hallelujah. And uh, a biblical awakening not a demonized awakening, a bunch of woke garbage, you know. I mean, it's being, uh, we, we turned on Hallmark the other day, and they had a five-minute long HIV commercial. It was just nothing but a, a promotion of the lifestyle. I mean, it's like, come, how much longer can this commercial go? You're like, good Lord. Just turn it off and come back five minutes later if you want to finish the show. Because it's, it is an absolutely in-your-face perversion commercial. Advertising the drug. Yeah, right. No, that's, that's, that's not what it's for. It is to push the agenda. Oh, Hallmark. <coughs> well, anyway, maybe they've gone down the tubes, but America hasn't. <coughs> so praise the Lord. Amen? There you go. Pray for our country. And then we have another one that we'll give later to pray for the nations. Okay, but right now our elect, this midterm election is important. Um, we pray, we believe God. As citizens, we, we do go and do the right thing. Amen. And we, we should, as Christians, being a Christian citizen, our values, the Word of God governs how we conduct ourselves as citizens. Okay? And so we need to vote godly. We do not need to vote because Grandma voted for so-and-so. Or that party takes care of my people or my group of folk or um, it's beneficial to me personally if that group. We need to vote morality. We need to vote God. God is a moral God. There are God morals. Amen. And uh, God is going, there is judgment coming to those who are perpetuators of evil. And you don't want to be connected to them. Hello? All right. Enough said. Praise God. All right. Children's Church, you get a couple of Raleigh's like, can I get out of here yet? <laughs> Do I still have a door behind me? Raleigh unhooked my seat. All right. Hallelujah. Um, I'm going to be joining Janie this morning so I can sit down. She wants to ask me questions about traveling on missions for in front of the kids. So I'm going to be back there. But um, thank you. Thankfully, uh, I had someone... Uh, sitting right there waiting at the last second when I said I'm not going to be able to preach tomorrow. I, I planned on it right up until pretty late yesterday, and I thought, then I finally went, I don't need, I don't need that because I'm, I'm, I'm already feeling a little wobbly right now. So anyway, clone has taken over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> and uh, praise the Lord. Love y'all. God. <laughs> How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Yes, so thank God for the Holy Spirit <laughs> and being instant in season and out of season. Because <laughs> I got a text, we were out and about, and I got a text, how are you feeling? <laughs> I am good. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be sharing this morning on identity. Um, just, you know, it's in him realities, but just, you know, focusing on the identity factor of that. Um, because, you know, we know from the word of God, I, I believe, you know, just with everything that I see in the word, of course, growing up in a word of faith family, growing up a Rama baby, and then going to Rama myself, in him realities and knowing who you are in Christ is the game changer. You know, it is the thing that opens doors in our minds. It opens things up in a whole new way. And when you know who you are, you know what you have, 
you know, you know where you stand and you can just walk boldly into all that God has for you. So that's kind of the vein I'm going to be dealing with today. My message title is Identity. Um, So I just want to start with looking at just identification. So the definition of that is from Webster's Dictionary. Identification is to consider or treat as the same. The condition or fact of being the same in all qualities under consideration. And of course, when we think about identification, all these words are connected. Identification, identity, identical, identified. So those are all related to that. Of course, we know looking today, identity is a big word in our society, whether for good or evil. (laughs) You know, I identify as has become the buzz phrase in our culture and in our society today. And people identify as all kinds of things. Don't you know the enemy wants to corrupt what God intended for good? And there's that void on the inside of each of us that without God, the enemy's going to fill. And so how is he filling it? With this identity crisis that we have, you know, where people are identifying as things that go completely against the word of God, whether it be a different gender than what they were born or an animal, you know, I identify as a cat, or you know, whatever. Identity is such a part of our culture today in a negative way because people are void of the understanding of who they are in him. Um, You know, when you think about young people too, even before things got this whatever, they look to the celebrities or, you know, people to kind of formulate their identification, how they identify, their hair, their style, you know, how they're going to dress, that kind of thing. And so the people that are in front of them are what really help shape and mold their identification um you know even like I think back as a preteen like people I looked to of course I had a little bit of a different upbringing so while my peers were looking to you know Britney Spears and people like that you know I was looking to a lot of like people like Ann Duran and Cindy Black um Mama Cindy um Cindy Duvall but also old school people like Audrey Hepburn you know like those were my like oh I want to dress like, I want to be classy like her, you know, kind of a thing. Um, But as young people, that's kind of how we are. We're seeking that identification, and that continues throughout our life. Um, We identify as our race or our nationality. You know, I'm American. I'm this race or ethnicity or, you know, whatever. We identify as our political party. Identity is such a part of our culture. Um, And the problem is sometimes people identify with things Beyond that, that they really shouldn't. Like, you know, um, they identify as depressed. They identify as whatever has, you know, some kind of name, you know. Um, And we know through the word that's not good, you know, to identify as those things. And we're going to get more into that. But when we see what God has done for us in Christ, The reality of redemption will swallow up all our former identities, okay? And so, you know, I would just encourage you as we come in contact with people who are in these situations of identity crisis, we just love on them and we just keep living the truth in front of them, you know, and we don't condone what they're doing, but we also understand they are coming from a place where they lack knowledge and it's our job you know, as ambassadors for Christ to carry that knowledge everywhere we go and to hopefully have a voice in people's lives to bring them up. Um, But in that vein, I want to talk about, um, you know, some of you may have one of these. Some of you may not. But you know what this is? This is a passport, okay? So this right here, you know, this I'm not going to open it up to my picture, but (laughs) um, this, you know, because it's a bad picture. I was so upset. No, (laughs) but this I carry with me, you know, obviously not necessarily here in the United States as much, but I carry this when I go outside of the United States because it is my identification. It says who I am. It presents who I am, and it presents that I am entitled to the protections of the U.S. government when I'm abroad, 
okay? So if you've traveled overseas, if you haven't, this might be, you know, new to you, but you always, and this is a tip if you ever travel out of, out of states, you keep this on you at all times because if something goes down, you can get more clothes, whatever you left at the hotel, wherever you are, but if something goes down, you need this in your hands because you are booking it to that embassy to say, I am a citizen of the United States and get in there and get safe, okay? So it says, you know, that I am entitled to certain protections. I am entitled to certain rights. Um, and the wonderful thing about citizenship is that whether I have been a citizen my whole life or whether I just became a naturalized citizen yesterday, guess what? If I'm overseas and something happens and I have to hold this out, am, is the person who grew up a, a citizen entitled to more rights than the person that just came into citizenship? No, we're on equal standing and equal ground. The understanding sometimes is sometimes people who are new don't understand the rights that they have. And the same is true with the word of God and our citizenship in the kingdom of heaven is that we have rights. You know, whether we have been in this a lot longer than someone else, we might have an understanding of our rights more so than someone that just came in. But we are all entitled to the same rights, the same provision, the same protection that comes through that citizenship when we come into the kingdom of God. Um, you know, so with that, while this is my identification, you know, that I'm a U.S. citizen, the word of God is my identification on who I am in him. And the more I get into that, the more I understand my identity and what I have and what I can access through him. Amen? So in Galatians 2.20 and 21, I'm going to be reading out of the Passion Translation. Um, but it says, my old identity has been cru co-crucified with the Messiah and no longer lives for the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of his new life is no longer mine for the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by faith by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. So that is why I don't view God's grace as something minor or peripheral. For if keeping the law could release God's righteousness to us, the anointed one would have died for nothing. Okay, so I, I love how this says we live in union as one. And then it goes on and dis says, he dispenses his life into mine. I just love the way that it's worded in that translation. Like, it just gets me excited. <laughs> so, um, you know, in this vein, spiritually speaking, we must carry legal identification to do business in the spiritual realm. The Bible contains all our official legal identification to become aware of who we are in Christ, the word of God must be engrafted into our inner man through meditation, okay? So we look at this, we look into this as, you know, our identification and who we are, what we have, what we have access to, amen? And it shapes and it molds us and changes us and shifts our views on ourselves, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is the guarantee that we are who God says we are and we have what God says we have. Amen. All right. So um, the, the evil the devil knows is that who we are when we have been born again, he knows who we are, but he hopes we don't know who we are, you know. He knows who we are. He knows. I will never forget one of my teachers at Rama. Um, so second year I did missions. And we actually had um, teachers that would come in for a quarter. So they were full-time missionaries, lived overseas, 
And then they would come in for a quarter, and they were housed, you know, they had like a missionary house at Rama that they would stay in, and they would come and teach for a whole quarter. And so they would come and teach the mission students. And so I got to have um, some really amazing people. But one of the persons that, one of the um, individuals that came, um, he actually went home to be with the Lord earlier this year. But he and his wife went into the Darien jungle. Does anyone know where the Darien jungle is? Nope. It's down in Panama. And it's like considered like the most dense jungle in the world and all this kind of stuff. Their stories about like their pioneer days, I'm sitting there like, Jesus, please call me to Paris. Like, please call me to Paris. <laughs> like, please do not call me to that place. <laughs> I don't know that I am cut out for that, you know. Um, tarantulas and snakes and all kinds of animals that could eat you and, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'm like, mm, I don't know that I'm cut out for that life. But um, they were pioneers, and they went down there into this dark jungle, a jungle that was just, you know, overrun with rich witchcraft and all this kind of stuff. But they also did, like, medical-type, you know, missions and stuff. And there was this witch doctor, and he came into their medical thing and started talking to them because he wanted to know what they had. And then he began to share with them. He said, you don't understand the power you operate in. He said that when they came into the jungle, there was like voices going off that said, behold, a child of the living God has entered. Like, what? <laughs> you know, like, what? And he said, there was like light coming out of your foreheads. And um, he said, and I was sending all these curses to the compound. He said, and they were shooting back and hitting me. He said, so whatever you have is stronger than what I have. And I want to know what you have, <laughs> you know. But it just hit me as I was sitting there and hearing them share that story. Like, we don't know fully, you know, what we have. Because here, you know, we don't necessarily, now we're seeing it open up a little bit more here in the United States, but some of these spiritual realms and stuff that you hear missionaries experience in places like that where witchcraft and stuff is very prominent. Here it's been a little more concealed. But if you knew who you were, I think you would walk a little bit differently, you know? If we had that understanding of who we are, Man, nothing could stop you, you know? Nothing could keep you from accessing what you, you know, you have access to. So, um, bec you know, because the enemy knows who we are, then we need to know who we are. Because we need to know our identity and authority that we have through Christ. You know, it's not found through being religious or using religious words. It's found through getting in this book, opening it up, finding out who you are, what you have, what you have access to. Um, James 1, 23 through 25, it says, If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like, a, like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and you forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. So what is this saying? If you open the word and you read something, you're like, yeah, that's good. That's who I am. And then you, you set it aside and you just go on about your life. Things happen, challenges come, and you forget who you are, you know. The sniffles come, and next thing you know, you are just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm dying, you know, or whatever, because <laughs> you've forgotten who you are and what you have access to. But if you meditate and you stay in the word of God, 
it begins to mold and to shape you where you don't just step away and forget who you are, but it becomes engrafted on the inside of you. You operate differently when you know who you are in him. Um, I want to read real quick. So this is it. Everybody know this little book? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So I'm looking at pages 21 through 23. You have heard this story. I have heard this story a million times growing up. But as I was studying, I was just reading through this. And um, I was like, I'm just going to read it straight out of the book. You know, but I probably I could tell it to you without reading out of the book. But I just want to read it out of the book. <laughs> All right. So we're looking at Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. And so in here, you know, Brother Hagin has a confession. The law of the life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And then he goes on to share this story. Dr. John G. Lake was a missionary to Africa many years before the modern full gospel movement. The deadly bubonic plague broke out in his area. Hundreds died. He cared for the sick, and he buried the dead. Finally, the British sent a ship with supplies and a corps of doctors. The doctors sent for Lake to come aboard and asked him, What have you been using to protect yourself? Sirs, Lake replied, I believe the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. And as long as I walk in the light of that law of life, no germ will attach itself to me. Don't you think you had better use your preventatives, the doctor urged? No, Lake said. But doctor, I think you would like to experiment with me. If you will go over to one of those dead people and take the foam that comes out of their lungs after death and put it under the microscope, you will see masses of living germs. You will find they are alive until a reasonable time after a man is dead. You can fill my hand with them, and I will keep it under the microscope. And instead of those germs remaining alive, they will die instantly. The doctors agreed. They made the experiment, and it was true. When they expressed wonder at what caused it, Lake told them, that is the law of the spirit of life. In Christ Jesus. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. And I love like what it says here. He says, let me go back and find it. Um, And as long as I walk in the light of the law of life, we know light is another word for knowledge, understanding. When we walk in that understanding, you know, Nothing can come near our, you know, as it says, thousand may fall at my side and 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come near me. When you have that knowledge and that understanding of who you are in him, hallelujah, that life lives on the inside of you and nothing can come and harm you, nothing. It might try and it's just another opportunity to prove God's word works. When you face those challenges in life, um, just thinking back, we you know we've traveled a lot this year, <laughs> in um, internationally and stuff. And when we went to France earlier this year, the U.S. had not lifted their requirements for COVID stuff. So everywhere else in the world had pretty much opened up, minus like the Asian part of the world. Um, you know, where things started. That was, that's still, I think Japan just opened up to tourism recently. But when we were going to France, everything else had opened up, but the U.S. required, you had to have a negative test, even if you were vaccinated, you had to have a negative test before you could fly back. If not, you had to quarantine wherever you were for like 10 days, right? 10 days, that's, that's, that's expensive, (laughs) you know, so praise God. (laughs) Obviously, we made it back. But while we were in France, you know, there was no masking and that kind of thing. But let me tell you, there was an opportunity to get worried. We both started getting a little bit of like a scratchy throat and some symptoms. (laughs) And the thought came up like, oh, no, you know. But then we just looked at each other. We were in line somewhere. I don't remember. And we're like, we're going to be fine. We're going to be negative. (laughs) We're going to be negative. And we just kept going on. It's not like we were 
whipping everything out, blah, 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 you know. But it's, what is it? It's that understanding of who you are and that understanding of where you stand and what you have access to. And guess what? When we went and we got our, like, little nasal swab, and we're sitting there in the waiting room, again, that temptation kind of popped up, and I was like, no, we're going to be fine. The paper came, and it said negative. We're like, praise God, I'm so happy to be negative. (laughs) because <laughs> I'm going back to my country and <laughs> not having extra expenses I didn't plan on. Um, and then, of course, you know, as we traveled in um, Turkey, Middle East, that kind of thing, um, you know, you're traveling in a whole new environment. And, of course, you want to make sure you're believing God because you're getting food. You don't know how that meat's been handled. You don't know um, how those vegetables have been handled. Of course, like later on in the week, we were informed that vegetables you don't want to eat in that part of the world. (laughs) And we're like, really? We've been eating them the whole time and we've been fine, (laughs) you know, Um, because I guess apparently they're not cleaned and stuff as well as stuff that we have here. We didn't have an issue. We just... You know, we're like, before we left on the trip, we're like, we're going to be fine. We're not going to have food poisoning. We're just going to be fine. Monkey pox was popping up, and we got a warning because it was in that part of the world. We're like, we don't have to worry about anything. You know, and that comes from knowing who you are, you know. Now, years ago, you know, when I was a lot younger, maybe it would have been a little bit easier to get, like, very worried about those things. But as we mature in our understanding of the word and our understanding of who we are, um, those things shift, you know, as things happen, you face challenges. It's an opportunity to grow in your faith, to grow in your understanding of who you are. Amen. Amen. So um, let's see here. I'm going to read this. This is Hebrews 2, um, 14 through 18. Since all his children have flesh and blood, so Jesus became human to fully identify with us. He did this so that he could experience death and annihilate the effects of the intimidating accuser who holds against us the power of death. By embracing death, Jesus sets free those who live their entire lives in bondage to the tormenting dread of death. For it is clear that he didn't do this for the angels, but for the sons and daughters of Abraham. This is why he had to be a man to take hold of our humanity in every way. He made us his brothers and sisters and became our merciful and faithful king priest before God. As the one who removed our sins to make us one with him, he suffered and endured every test and temptation so that he can help us every time we pass through the ordeals of life. So, you know, just because we face battles, it doesn't mean we are helpless, you know, and um, there'll be things that we face and there'll be challenges that come. But we have a helper. We have someone who has faced those and come out victorious. And because we identify with him, we are one with him, we are in him, we too can rise victorious over whatever circumstances and challenges come. So don't you let the battle cause you to lose your focus on who you are in Christ. Amen. I know there's been challenges like we've faced, um, challenges I've faced personally, and it tests those things in you. And sometimes, you know, if you haven't been spending as much time in the Word as you need to, or it's one of those battles that just stretches you to the edge of your knowledge, <laughs> you know, and the edge of your understanding. And there's, you, you kind of get in those blues where you just want to cry and you're just so like deep in the dumps about things. But I guarantee you when you get into this, when you get into the word and you start letting this shape and mold who you are, you lose all of those other. Just like, um, you know, 
when we talked about earlier. Let me make sure I quote it correctly from my notes. <laughs> All right. Um, when we see what God has done for us in Christ, the reality of redemption will swallow up all our former identities. I love that. I actually, that that's not Jessica. That's Mark Hankins. <laughs> I love Mark Hankins. If you want some good teaching on in him realities, Mark Hankins has some good teachings. Um, you know, like going on, obviously I listen to Dad Hagen a lot. Um, read Dad Hagen a lot, but I also like listening to people who are, you know, with us today operating in, you know, that and so forth. And Mark Hankins is one I just, I love listening to him. He's funny too. If you haven't listened to him, he's funny. He'll make you laugh. <laughs> All right. Um, 1 John 5, 4 through 5. You see every child of God overcomes the world. For our faith is the victorious power that triumphs over the world. So who are the world conquerors defeating its power? Those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. So there is always something more for us in Christ. There is always victory for us in Christ. Amen. And we are conquerors. Amen. Defeating the world's power. Hallelujah. Um, also, we realize every promise, every promise through the word of God is ours. We need to realize that all things are possible because of him. And all things he promised are mine because of him. I have access to all of those things. Your salvation will do you no good except to get you to heaven unless... You understand in Christ scriptures and the purpose of your life in him. We've talked about that before. If the only purpose to this life was to get saved, we may as well move to heaven. Get saved, move to heaven. Bam, got, got it. We got, the, we got the goal and the aim of this life. But there's more in Christ. Amen. There's more that we're called to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants us to be transformed, not conformed. Romans 12, 2 talks about this. Be ye transformed. Hallelujah. Um, and when you know who you are, you have no problem with your identity. Excesses and changes of, you know, changing winds of doctrine that come along, the lies the enemy sends your way through thoughts or words and criticisms of others, will just roll off your back. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, you know, that's something I've noticed in myself. When I was younger, you know, criticisms. You, you, when you're younger, you want everybody to like you. You know, it's just kind of one of those rites of passages of being young, I guess. You want everybody to like you. Um, now, I was a little weird in that with some things I really didn't care you know, I didn't understand why people didn't like me, but there were some things I just didn't care, you know. I just, well, this is what I believe kind of a thing. But then there were other areas where I was like, well, why don't people like me, <laughs> you know, kind of a thing. But the older I've gotten, I am realized, you know what, not everybody's going to like me, and that's okay. <laughs> because I am who I am. God created me the way he created me. You know, and I know there's a message and there's truth. I'm not going to compromise because I know it's what breaks chains. I know it's what sets captives free. And I'm not going to compromise it just because someone thinks I'm mean or critical, <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whatever else they may say or a little weird because I'm one of those holy rollers, you know, kind of a thing. No, nope. I know the truth. I've experienced his presence, and I know what ha the, what the world has is nothing compared to what he offers me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. By faith, we are identified with Christ and who the word says we are. Did you know, you probably did because you've been trained very well in this church. <laughs> but did you know there are uh, over 130 in Christ, in him, in whom, in the Lord, scriptures showing you your new identity. You could do a whole 
you know, long study on those. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And I just jotted down a few of them. And as I was typing my notes up and looking up all these references, I was, like, getting excited myself. Like, it was just like, whoo, <laughs> this is good. And this was all coming from the Holy Spirit, you know, praise God. But this identification tells me I am a new creature, 2 Corinthians 5.17. I am chosen, Ephesians 1, 4, Colossians 3, 12, 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. I'll share these on Facebook later if you want a copy of this whole list. Um, I am a child of God, John 1, 12. I am the branch of the true vine and a conduit of Christ's life, John 15, verses 1 and 5. I am no longer a slave to sin, Romans 6, 6. It also says my old self was crucified with Christ. I am free, Romans 8, 2, Galatians 5, 1. I am a joint heir with Christ, Romans 8, 17. I am accepted, Romans 15, 7. I am a saint, 1 Corinthians 1, 2, Ephesians 1, 1, Philippians 1, 1, and Colossians 1, 2. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I am blessed, Ephesians 1, 3. I am holy and blameless, Ephesians 1, 4, 4, 24, and Colossians 3, 12. I am redeemed, Ephesians 1, 7. I am forgiven, Ephesians 1, 7. I am alive with Christ, Ephesians 2, 4 through 5. I am seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6. I am God's workmanship, Ephesians 2, 10. And I am created to do good works, Ephesians 2, 10. I am bold, Ephesians 3, 12. I am confident, Ephesians 3, 12. I am a citizen of heaven, Philippians 3, 20. I am healed, James 5, 14 through 15, Jeremiah 30, 17, and 1 Peter 2, 24. I am whole, 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 through 28. I have peace, Philippians 4, 7, Romans 15, 13, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. I am fully supplied, Philippians 4, 19. I am complete in Christ, Colossians 2, 10. I am raised up with Christ, Colossians 3, 1. I have a sound mind, 2 Timothy 1, 7. I have wisdom, 1 Corinthians 1, 30. I am righteous, 1 Corinthians 1, 30, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, and Ephesians 4, 24. I am loved, Colossians 3, 12, John 3, 16, 1, uh, 1 Thessalonians 1, 4, and Romans 8, 30 through 39. That's one of my favorite passages, Romans 8. I am victorious. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. I am more than a conqueror, Romans 8, 37. I am prosperous, Jeremiah 29, 11, Deuteronomy 8, 18, Philippians 4, 19. I am anointed, 1 John 2, 20, verses 27, and 2 Corinthians uh, 1, 21. And I am full of joy, Romans 15, 13, Galatians 5, 22 through 23, and John 16, 24. Hallelujah. That just stirred me up typing that up yesterday. I was like, man, this is so good. <laughs> you know, that's the answer to everything that we face. Everything, you know, when young people face these feelings of, you know, uncertainty, give them a list of who they are in Christ. Face what they are in Christ, hallelujah, so they can look at that, and it can combat the lies of the enemy, you know, that they're, they're too timid, they're too this, they're not pretty, they're ugly, you know, they're too fat, they're too slim, they're too whatever that, you know, happens, and with us as, an, as adults, we face those things too, but when you understand who you are in Christ, what you have, that list right there just stirs you up, and you know what you have access to in him, amen, hallelujah, and it transforms how you see yourself, hallelujah, amen. So I'll share that later because that, that was fresh off the press. I just typed all that up last night. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, I think especially if you, if you 
deal with those things. Of course, like the things we talk about with people deal with today, with depression and anxiety. I have peace. I am whole. You know, I have joy. Like all of that deals with those situations. Amen. The word of God is the answer for everything that the world faces, no matter what it is. He's already given us the answer. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Well, that was all I had for you today. I hope that that blessed you. Um, And it stirred me up just, you know, looking up as I was looking those things up and organizing it. I'm just like, thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, we're good. You're done. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't know if you wanted to say something because you're in here. (laughs) Oh, okay. Kids share, talking about praying for, you know, traveling in the nation. She wouldn't me share a little bit. Um, so we talked, I showed them where all the places we've been in the world on the map. And uh, then you asked the biggest challenge, which is cultural. Uh, that's always your biggest challenge, tra- traveling to other nations is cultural. And, um, you know, navigating the cultural differences. Mm-hmm. And uh, same message. You just got to navigate the cultural differences. Like um, I, was, I told them, when I was in Thailand, they told me, first thing, don't say anything negative about the king because mm-hmm. he'll kill you because he's a deity in, in Thailand. Now, not the Christians, but the, the people there in the country could, would because they consider the king a deity. And uh, so you just preach the gospel and leave that king alone and just talk about the king of kings. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I, didn't get the, I can't say great job because I didn't hear it. So, <laughs> But I'm sure it was a great job. Hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sweetie. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can go sit down. I mean, you don't have to stay up here. I mean, yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, don't forget Wednesday night Bible study, Tuesday night prayer. If you are um, wanting to be a part of the Tuesday night prayer, I forgot how we get in there. Um, There's a slide. The QR code. With the QR code. Mm-hmm. There you go. <coughs> yeah, this new generation, they love QR codes. It makes it really easy. There. You just hit the QR code. It'll get you to the meeting. Hallelujah. It's going to prompt you to send a text, but it pr- prompts there everything. There you go. We all don't have to do anything except the text. Hit that QR code. you get all the information you need. Yep. Okay. Hold your phone up there. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. What did we do before QR codes? <laughs> we sat there and we typed it all in. Huh? Yeah, you had to remember the address. And um, what did we do before that? And what did we do before that? We just showed up. I'm old enough to be, know, how to know how to program with punch cards. And they'd say, what's that? You know, cards that had little holes in it. You're like, what's that? Forget it. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll even one up that. My one of my instructors in, in college came in one day with this this metal rack with wires all over it with gator clips on each end. That was a program. They actually wired it with a schematic using gator clips, and they slid that into the machine, and that ran the program. And um, I'll just, I'll tell you, you know what programming is? It's circuit, te- it's cir- circuit theory. Electronic circuit theory is all it is. You open and close in circuits, and uh, you're doing it with con- commands, but that's what it's doing. Hallelujah. And uh, you probably didn't need that information, but now you're going to go home and think about circuit theory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming out today. Um, you know, I'll be back uh, Wednesday night. I, I May could have gone for today, but I just thought it was best I didn't. Um, and uh, and then you get to enjoy Jessica. I know I've been out for the like, three of the last four weeks with being out of town preaching, the uh, dedication. I was here last week preaching and then this week. Uh, but, you know, hallelujah. I don't take time off, if you all know that, over, the, over time. I, I don't just not preach. Hallelujah. And, of course, two of them, somebody else was preaching because we were having a dedication. The other one I was preaching out of town, which is not – haven't done in a while, and then this was one where I'm just not doing something else, which is not normal. 
Hallelujah. All right, stand up. We love you. God bless you. Come get it. Come be with us on Wednesday night. Join us for prayer on Tuesdays. Be back here next Sunday. Don't forget, two weeks from today, down east fried chicken and barbecue, uh, coleslaw and potatoes, uh, cornbread sticks, and, and uh, dessert. Hallelujah. Who's going to make desserts? Yeah, everybody's pointing to Rita and Ellie and, yeah, there we go. You know, what is that? They got that punch bowl cake, banana puddings, and, you know, chocolate eclairs. And um, chocolate eclairs. Okay. Hallelujah. I mean, if you like, if you make a Mississippi mud cake or if you, you know, just bring it all. We'll work on it. All right. All right. We love you. You're just.